Hey everyone. <laughs> hey, welcome, welcome. Right. Hey, can can everyone hear me nice and clearly? I can I can see. Uh, let, let me let me just pull up my chat area. You you can practice your um. Uh, we have this dedicated chat area over here, so you can send through your your messages. If you can hear me, if you can see me, you know, do me a favor, just send a message through, so I know that you guys can hear me perfectly, right? Um, I think I think the audio should be working. Yep, um, audio should be working. Okay, cool, cool. Pull up the Q and A. All right. Hey, Olivia. Hey, night. Uh. Oh, Miranda, yeah, uh, Leon, yeah, yeah. I, I just got your question, right? I, will, I, will, I, I saw it come true. I have not uh, responded to it yet. Uh, let, let, let me get to that later today. Uh, all is well, all is well. I'm gr it's great that you guys can hear me. Right? I'm, I'm uh, presenting from home today, right? Because uh, I'm actually on, <laughs> I actually just got my kid, right? I just got my kid, uh, little boy, right? Just born about seven, eight days ago, eight days ago. Was it eight days ago? Yeah, right. eight or nine days ago. Right, so I just got a little boy, right? So I'm here, uh, home with the wife, with the kid, right? <laughs> and of course, now with you guys, right? So it'll be a very fun time, a very fun time today, right? Um, thank you, thank you very much, darling, right? Thank you, uh, um, thank you, Ellen, right? Yes, <laughs> I'm not sure if you can see my IVEX, all right, guys, man, if you can, <laughs> if you can see my IVEX, right? If you can't see my IVEX, then you need to thank. Uh, Zoom's uh, makeup, you know, I think touch up feature where it just, you know, uh, <laughs> hides your eye for you or something. But man, I, I never knew uh, I could operate on so little sleep before. All right. But, but yeah, no, if anything, you know, I, I might find myself trading the US sessions a little bit more because I'm stuck up all night anyway. Right. Uh, uh, oh, Richie, the, his name is Lucas. Right, yeah, Lucas, Lucas Leong, right? So it's not Elliot, right? I tried to convince her to, you know, to use Elliot because of Elliot Wave, right? So <laughs> it'd be the perfect joke I can keep using, you know, for, for many years to come. But no, nah, his name is Lucas. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Fatherhood's okay, fatherhood's quite okay, right? Um, it's, it's, quite, it's, it's quite interesting, right? It's quite interesting. It's quite fun. It's quite fun. But yeah, you know, it's uh, now every day, I guess, revolves around sleeping um, him sleeping pooping eating right that's about it <laughs> thank you israel yeah yeah no, 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 no more sleeping nights yeah maybe i can create a new indicator richie yeah oh richie you can you can change your um your messages if you want you can send it to everyone too right so um so everyone can see each other's messages it's pretty cool here that's what i like about uh the zoom right everyone's able to see my screen right everyone able to see my screen um, the ultimate forex trading masterclass. Okay, awesome. Not sure if you guys can um can see my cat. Any of you guys ever seen my cat before? It's one of the few times like this six past six months where I finally get present from home and she's lying right beside me. Let me see if I can tweak the screen so that you can see her. Let's see. Not sure if you can see her. Can you see my cat? I'm not sure you can see my cat. Oh, I can see my screen now, but that's my cat there. <laughs> it looks like she's having a good life, right? A good life cat, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, she's, <laughs> she's down there sleeping, having a time of her life, right? And she's the original, she's the original indicator. Do you, do you get it? Right, she's the, you know, she's the indie indicator. Right. Oh man, that's so lame. <laughs> but I always like to crack a joke, right? She's you know, she tells me when to buy and tells me when to sell. <laughs> okay, guys. Right, okay. You know, I, you can tell I'm 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 brushing up on my dad jokes, right? <laughs> okay, okay. Now enough uh, enough of the uh enough of the dad jokes, right? Let, let's begin today's session. Today's session. Right, Ultimate Forex Trading Masterclass brought to you by Tickmill, right? Uh, remember, there's a disclaimer there, you know, Forex trading can be risky, right? And I think this webinar should be construed as investment or trading advice. So please uh, do your own due diligence before you guys trade, all right? Today's, today's webinar, we're going to focus, we're going to focus on analysis, right? So it's um, a lot of people actually gravitate towards technical analysis because it's much more, um, it's much more, what's the word for it? It's much more, 
real right? in the sense that you know you can see it and there's less room for misinterpretation right for fundamental analysis you know sometimes it's a little bit wishy-washy right sometimes you say oh you know there's risk on there's risk off sentiment you know there's you know there's a hawks or you know the dovish you know there's a lot of a um it's a lot less um what's the word precise um it's more of like a guiding momentum kind of thing Right, so I'll be sharing with you a little bit uh, on how I actually use it to trade. There is a way to use it to trade. Um, it's a little bit trickier, right? Um, but let, let me first. Um, wait, there's too many things I'm popped up over here, right? Um, but let me first uh, move on from here. Okay, so um, today I'm your speaker, Desmond Leong, right? If you want to find me on Instagram, nothing much over there. Um, mainly me, my cat, um, FIFA, right, and and soon my my kid, I guess, right? You can find me on Comfy Desmond over there. Right, so uh, finalist for the best 2019, 2020, 2021, 2021 for best FX re research and uh, 2020, 2020 and 2021 for best equity research. So uh, really good. Um, I run a very, very strong team of traders, right? Uh, many of them have passed many trading competitions, right? Won many awards, right? And in today's session, you know, uh, I'll be showing you guys my take on fundamental analysis. Okay, I'll be showing you my take on fundamental analysis. Now, um, let me go on to the next slide over here. Okay, so what we can expect in today's session. Okay, I'm just going to uh, mention really quickly um, what is fundamental analysis, right? We're going to take a quick look at the using the economic indicator and uh, the, uh, the economic calendar. Let me see if I can have my little pen over here where I can just draw stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm going to look at the economic calendar over here, right? I just give a little bit of ways how to interpret it. Then I'm going to talk about this concept of known unknowns to you. Right, and this uh, known unknowns would, would also um, uh, lead us to the next thing, which is looking at a time versus price sensitivity matrix. So the thing about fundamental analysis is that a lot of people think that when it comes to fundamental analysis, that you just, um, you know, you, you should use it no matter your trading style. But, but, but the truth is, right, when it comes to fundamental analysis, depending on your trading style, you might find a use for it or you might not find a use for it, right? So if you guys can share with me really quickly, um, how many of you guys are, are scalpers, right? That means you take a trade, you get in, out, in and out of a trade very fast. How many of you guys are day traders, you know, kind of take a trade, you know, just for the day itself, you know, you don't hold a trade beyond the day. And how many of you guys are swing traders where, you know, your trades last a little bit longer, you know, any, anywhere from, um, um, couple of days to a week, right? I just like get a gauge on um, on on the room, you know, just to see uh, how many of you guys, uh, the trading style of you guys. Well, a trend trader, Leon, a, a trend trader could be, uh, you know, could be trading a trend on a five minute chart. You'd be trading a trend on a 15 minute chart. So um, it, it really depends on the, um, what we're looking at is how long you're holding a trade, right? So, okay, we got actually quite a number of, quite a good um, breakdown of scalpers, swing traders, and day traders, right? And, and among you guys here, um, the fundamental analysis, right, affects your trading styles in different degrees. I'll be sharing with you what it means a little bit later in the time versus price sensitivity matrix. Right, Richie, you know, if, you, if you're new to trading, right, um, the... A safer bet might be day and swing trading because um, in, when you're scalping, you need to be really, really good with your um, technical analysis, right? Because that's where the market can really whip you out. You know, um, the news events especially can really whipsaw you and, you know, can knock you out. Um, you know, can take you out of a trade um, even though you might be fundamentally correct, right? So that we will be exploring in time versus price sensitivity matrix later. We are going to look at a few macroeconomic analysis if we have a little bit of time Right, because this is important, but at the same time, you know, it's it's things that can be covered online if we if we have the time we touch we touch on this. But what I want to really really focus on is of course um how how you can not just a wishy washy kind of like topic, right? It's not just a wishy washy topic on um fundamental analysis, right? Instead, we're 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 going to 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 show you how you can apply it in trading, which is the most important thing, right? Mm -hmm. Actionable, um, actionable education, right? That's the key thing I want to focus on actionable education okay now let's uh let, let's let's begin today's session all right okay next slide oh it looks like the the drawings remain there i need to clear the drawings clear my drawings right i wonder is there a way with keynote i can just draw on the charts 
there is probably a way, right? But because I'm not much of a Mac user, I don't know how to do that. So I'm just gonna leave it, uh, leave it there, okay? Now, what is fundamental analysis, guys, right? So what is fundamental analysis? I, let me share with you a, um, you know how when you, when you go to a, when you go to a doctor, right? So a doctor will, will give you a health checkup, right? A doctor will give you a health checkup, you know, take your, take your blood pressure, right? Take your cholesterol level, right? And then, you know, can see different things, right? See, see your health, right? I, I, I went for one recently and my, my cholesterol is a little bit higher than I, than, I, than I would want to. I think it's all the, it's all the drinking and all the late nights. It's not helping, right? So to cut down my cholesterol a bit. But with the diagnosis, then you know um, how healthy or how unhealthy you are, right? So, so that's, how, that's how it works when it comes to um, looking, at, uh, you know, looking at your health. Now, fundamental analysis is like looking at the health of a country. If we have blood pressure, you know, BP, right, um, for, for humans, you know, a country might use um, CPI, right? So, you know, all the different readings, blood pressure, cholesterol levels, you know, um, your, your <laughs> a few other things, uh, what is it? I think there's some stuff to do with the kidney. I, I, yeah, there's all the different all the different words over there, right? So with with a country is similar. You know, fundamental analysis is like a doctor, and you're taking the health of country. What are your unemployment numbers? What are your you know what's your CPI numbers? What's your inflation? What's your growth rate? What's your GDP? Right. So you're taking all the different numbers, and from there you kind of get a gauge on like, hey, how um how healthy is this country? Now, how healthy a country is would then affect, right? Um, the 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 strength of the currency, the strength of the stock market, the strength of, of course, the the demand for commodities and stuff. Right, but of course, it affects really hugely the strength of a uh, of a country's currency. All right. So at the core. At the core, I'll be showing you some numbers we can, uh, some different figures we can use to measure it. But when people talk about fundamental analysis, they're really just talking about the health of a country, right? If we look at stocks, right, you know, um, look at futures, look at commodities, right? There are different ways that you can apply fundamental analysis, but fundamental basically are just looking at the, you know, the fundamentals, the core, the foundation, right? The health of a certain asset class. If you're looking at the stock market, uh, if you're looking at like Apple, right? Fundamental analysis, um, Atari, I can see that you're raising your hand, all right? So if you're raising your hand, just shoot your question right through. Um, send it in the chat section, all right? So that I can, um, because I have, I literally have another screen open here, um, actually open below. So I can actually see all the questions come through, right? So feel free to send it through your questions right away. Don't wait. Oh yeah, that's one thing I want to encourage you guys. Do not wait until the end of the webinar because if, the, uh, if history tends to repeat itself, we will never have time for Q&A, right? Because they're trying to uh, cover as much as, as possible, right? So just send your questions through and do my, do my best to get to them, all right? So what, um, so yeah, you know, if you're looking at stock market, right? You're looking at Apple, right? You're going to look at the stuff like the PE ratio, the profitability, right? EBITDA, right? Look at all these different stuff. You're just measuring the health, okay? That is fundamental analysis. Now, what I'm going to touch on next, right? Let me just move this, uh, move my stuff around so it's a little bit neater. Right. Okay. What I'm going to touch on next is this thing called when it comes to fundamental fundamental analysis. One thing that we tend to look at, um, which I encourage you guys to look at, is this thing called the economic calendar. Okay, the economic calendar, and I'm going to show you how to get access to it later. Now, the economic calendar, you can think about it as like uh, the it's it's a place where you get all the different um, all the different health reports of a country. Right, you notice that over here by the side, you know, you got you got different countries. You know, you got Japan over here, right? And you got this is France, I think, right? And my <laughs> my flat game is not that strong, right? But yeah, you know, you got you got different uh different countries, and then you know you get the different readings, right? So let let so for example, let me just pull up a handy dandy chart over here. Oh, well, not not really a chart, but but maybe more of a. How do I uh, clear my drawings? But how do I not draw anymore? Mouse. Okay. So there you go. So you know, you go to tick meal, you can tick meal economic calendar. 
right? Take me to economic calendar, you click on it, right? This is a handy little place where you can find, um, you know, find the, the, the big news events that are coming up. It's pretty cool, right? Like, what I like about the economic calendar is that you can put it in a timeline view like this, or, you know, you can have it in a, like a little bit of a calendar view over here and you can filter this little filter only high importance news events. So you notice like orange and red, right? Those are the big news events. So if it's unfiltered, you have boring stuff, you know, stuff that are just not that important, like wholesale inventory, right? But if you click only high importance, it actually shows you the orange and the red ones, right? Core inflation, of course, inflation is super important because, you know, inflation, you know, affects um, what the central banks will do, which affects the interest rates, which would then affect the currency. All right. So, so this is a place where you look at economic calendars. What is, um, what is particularly handy about this economic calendar, right, is that it actually shows you the date and the, the exact date and time is going to happen. Now, when you know the date and time of something, let, 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 let's say, let's try out something over here, right? Um, let's say Germany, super, super big um, country in Euro, right? CPI final year on year, okay? How many of you guys know when this event happens, is it going to be bullish or is it going to be bearish? Does anyone want to get a guess? This is happening on May the 11th, which is on Wednesday, right? And it's going to happen at 1400, if I'm not wrong, GMT. How many of you guys know whether it's going to be bullish or is it going to be bearish? Anyone want to take a guess? I got Charles saying that, you know, it might... It might be bullish, right? How do I pull up my... Okay, there you go. Oh, let's say it's my bullish, right? Okay. Bullish or bearish, right? People, it's, it's hard to know for sure. Kelvin says it's bullish. Quite a number of you guys are saying that it's bullish. Okay. All right. Now, this is what I call, which leads me to my next point, right? This is what I call a known unknown. Okay. This is what I call a known unknown. Um, yeah, so so Alex put a pretty good point. You know, it depends on the actual result. You know, is it gonna be good or uh, is it bad? You know, what is the result that's gonna come out? Some people use this term called econometrics where they, they crunch massive amounts of data just to predict, but it's rarely ever kind of accurate. Right, but instead, you know, as even as we retail traders, you know, it's, it's it's almost impossible to accurately forecast what the actual CPI data is going to be. Okay, however, however, this is what we call a known unknown. What I mean by known unknown is that where is my chart? Is that we know exactly at fourteen hundred GMT on a Wednesday is going to happen. So that's what I mean by known. Okay, uh, let me just pick up my drawing tool. Right, so this is what I mean by unknown, unknown. You know it's gonna happen, but the outcome, this is the outcome, is unknown, okay? Uh, my handwriting is still legible, <laughs> okay? Yeah, you, you, know, you know it's an outcome, but it's, you, you know it's gonna come, but it's an unknown outcome. And that, uh, this is particularly important for high, right, for high volatility news events, okay? For high volatility news events. Because what happens during those events is that when it comes, when the news events comes, right? This, this, you know, as a fundamental analyst, right, looking at all these different um, data, because you know these are the readings that you need CPI, you need PPI, you need uh, non-farm payroll, unemployment reports, you know, you need inflation reports, you need interest rate decisions. All of this is shown to you that we know exactly, we know exactly when it's going to come. The problem is that we do not know the outcome. Right, so that is what I mean by known unknowns. Now, usually, what you want to look out for is high volatility news events, because when there's high, uh, um, high vol high impact news events, rather high impact news events are the ones where just let me um go back to my mouse. I'm going to clear all my drawings. Right, high impact news events are these ones, right? Those that are um you know a little bit orange, a little bit red. If you want to um, you can see over here medium, low, and high high impact news events. You need to know when they're coming, okay? Now, because if you were a scalper, okay? If you were a scalper, 
So when you're scalping, um, for, for those who are here for the first, um, who are not familiar with the term scalping, right? So scalping actually means that you get in and out of a trade fast, all right? That means your, your stop loss and your take profit is usually pretty tight, all right? Let me see if I can pull up my little, my little drawing tool over here, right? If you're a scalper, you know, you enter into a trade, you know, your, your stop loss, if this is your entry, you know, your take profit and maybe your stop loss is very, very tight. You keep it very, very tight. Right. If you are a day trader, you know, you might have a little bit more breathing space. You might put your stop loss and your take profit slightly for, um, slightly further away. Right. Swing trader, you can even put it further away. Now, when this kind of news events come and, and there's a lot of volatility, right? There's you know, a news event comes, you imagine price, you get into a trade, right? News event comes. Price spikes down, stops you up, and then shoots up, right? So when this happens, you get stopped out first before, you know, of course, you don't get, you, you know, you don't get your profit target hit because you get stopped out, right? It might happen both ways. It might spike to hit your take profit. It might go down to your stop loss. But because you're a scalper, right, you are very vulnerable to volatility, okay? When you're a scalper, you're very vulnerable to volatility, Okay, I'll be showing you what I mean by that with this really, really handy tool I call the, um, it's something, ah, oh, shoots, man. Uh, it's something I call the time and price sensitivity matrix. You can take a screenshot of it if you want, right? I, I kind of created it, um, I kind of created it myself, right? Um, look at this, right? So let me just pull out my handy dandy pen over here, right? There are two kinds, right? There, there are the scalpers. They're the day traders and they're the swing traders, okay? So these are the three different trading styles over here. Scalping, day trading, and swing trading, okay? Now, and then there is the three kind of start, um, uh, approaches to, um, to trading. You have technical analysis. You have economic news releases, which, which you know, is similar to the economic news calendar I showed you. And then you got fundamental analysis, right? Fundamental analysis is stuff like, you know, you really seeing um, when a CPI report comes out, inflation report comes out, non-farm payroll report comes out, how effective is it you know, in your trading strategy? Now, let's look at it bit by bit, all right? If you are a scalper, right? As a scalper, you have a really, really high reliance on technical analysis, okay? So that means you, know, you, need, to, you need to rely a lot on technical analysis because if you're on the five-minute chart, right? What moves a five-minute chart has, and what moves a fifteen-minute chart even is has a lot more to do with technical analysis than um, than fundamental analysis. If I tell you, if I tell you that, yeah, yeah, um, you know what? I think uh, Biden, you know, or you know, might win the next election, right? Or or I just say that um, I see something along the lines that. Yeah, this Russia, um, is it Russia Ukraine war, you know, it's you know, it's gonna weigh, you know, it's probably gonna last for a couple more months, right? Um, you know, there's gonna be a lot of volatility, right? And you know, it's probably going to affect the prices of oil and gold uh, a bit more. Okay, so let, let's just say gold, okay. Let's just say um this whole um economic uncertainty is gonna affect gold a lot more. So that is fundamental analysis, all right. Now, with that news, okay, you have the news now. It's like, all right, okay, gold is likely to go up because of this uncertainty that is happening in the world with this, you know, with the war, okay? Now, then you look at the five-minute chart and you're thinking, okay, um, how am I, sorry, my cat just got up, right? How am I going to apply this to trading? How am I going to apply this to the next five minutes, Right? Okay, you know, the, the, the goal is generally bullish, but how is it going to affect the next 20 minutes, 30 minutes when I'm in a trade? The truth is, it really, really affects it, right? So the important thing here, right, when, when, it, comes to, when it comes to trading, right, one important thing that I want to teach you guys is that in the world of trading, it's so scary because you can learn the right stuff and you can learn the wrong stuff. It's different from the world of academia. Right. In the world of academia, you know, you can, if you're, if you're studying, right, if you're studying for an exam, you study, however, the more you study, the better your result is, right? There is a linear correlation, right? The more you study, the better your result is. But the scary thing about trading is that, you know, when you study, you might study the wrong stuff, right? And if you study the wrong stuff, you might affect your trading, you know, your, your performance might go down in state. 
right? So it's very different. So people who are really, really good at academia, right? Really, really smart. They, they often struggle, you know, when it comes to trading because, you know, the, sometimes the logic doesn't make sense to them. You know, they, they are studying and studying this pursuit for knowledge. They keep studying and studying and studying. They want to learn so much more, but it doesn't result in improvement in their trading, right? Because when it comes to trading, it is equally important to know what to study and what not to study. So if you're a scalper, if you answered earlier that you're a scalper, you should have a high reliance on technical analysis. You should ideally have a higher reliance on technical analysis. You should pay a lot of attention to um, economic news releases, all right? You should pay a lot of attention to economic news releases because it affects um, the, the, the result might you know it's an unknown result you do not know what the non-farm payroll is going to be even if you know what's the non-farm payroll result going to be you do not know how the market is going to react to it right it might go crazy right sometimes you know the, the number shows better but the, the market doesn't go as intended right so economic news releases are high impact and that's why it affects you a lot all right then fundamental analysis right you, you should ideally have a lower reliance on fundamental analysis. Like it's okay to know what the CPI and PPI data is, right? But will, will it affect your trade over the next few days? Unlikely, right? Because if you're a scalper, you're getting in and out of a trade fast, right? So as a scalper, how many of you guys want, uh, want to take a guess? What is the time frame you should ideally be looking at? What time frame should you ideally be trading at? You know, is it the five, the 15, the one hour? All right, I see some answers coming in. A lot of people are saying five minutes, 15 minutes. Oh, one to three minutes. All right, that's, that's intense, man. <laughs> it's intense. All right. L one hour chart. All right, all right, by John. Okay. Depends, skill from one. Yep. I, like, I actually really like Andrew's answer where he scales down from the one hour to 15 minute, that even though you want to take the trades on the 15 minute, you actually scale down from the one hour because the one hour helps you see the higher time frame if there are any big levels that you're missing out on. All right. So um, Lani, right, is answering uh, one day chart. That's a little bit too, um, that's a little bit too, um, too big a time frame. Right, because the one day chart, you know, but you know, <laughs> in a one day chart, you know, each, each bar that occurs is one day, right? So, just by the very fact there's a one day chart, it's already going to be at least day trading or swing trading, it's unlikely to be a scalping strategy. But yes, most of the time, you're going to a five minute chart as a key, um, as a key um, chart to use for the um, for technical analysis, uh, for scalping, right? Um, most I would go is maybe one hour, okay just to take a top-down approach. We'll touch a little bit more on that, on that later. So over here, you know, kind of looking at the five minute, um, five minute all the way to the one hour chart, okay? The next thing that we want to look at, right? Next thing that we want to look at is um, day trading. Day trading, you also, right? So the definition of day trading is that the trades last anywhere, um, usually within the day. You don't try to close the trade beyond the day, right? You try to close the trade within the day. That's why it's called day trading, Okay, so um, you usually have a high reliance on technical analysis. Now, you also have a high impact. Um, economic news releases also do impact you quite a bit. Okay, um, high impact, but usually only the high impact news releases. Okay, guys, if you have raised your hands, I can see a, a couple of you guys are raising your hands, right? Um, go ahead, uh, Atari, Hanhua, and Alex, go ahead and ask your questions, all right? I, I literally have, um, oh, do I have Q&A? Um, direct talk about the uh, marketing. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I'll, I'll touch on those later uh, about scalpings and stuff, all right? But uh, because we do need to cover some of the topics today, right? Especially fundamental analysis. Um, okay, now, now, let, let, let me move on. Okay, yeah, so the economic news releases will have a lower impact on your trading, okay? Um, meaning that if it's low, if it's low or medium, you know, it usually has a lower impact. On your, on your trading, when you're a day trader. However, fundamental analysis would then have a medium, uh, there'll be a medium reliance to it, okay? That means it, it, it starts to affect you a little bit more, you know, on the, the momentum for the day, the, ge the general momentum for the day, you know, um, it starts to affect you a, lot, a little bit more. Then lastly, of course, there's swing trading, right? So far, if you're a day trader, you usually should be looking at 1H, you know, to 4H, 1H to 4H as a chart. Okay, now if you are a swing trader, you have a medium reliance, right? Your medium reliance on technical analysis, so you don't need to go in that crazy on technical analysis, 
right? Yeah, don't go in that crazy on technical analysis, right? Um, Alex, how do you speculate on high volatility? She's asking a question now. So to speculate on high volatility, you know, uh, you kind of, um, you need to trade when there's a volatile news event. For example, non-farm payroll. Those, those news events with a red dot beside it means that there's high volatility. Well, you want to speculate, right? There are two ways to do it, right? First way is actually to, to, to guess the result. Right, there is a concept called econometrics, right, where you are you crunch numbers to determine where the um what the number might be. What is a CPI number? What's a PPI number? Right, because if you can guess with just a marginally higher accuracy than the market, you know the market tends to go crazy in one direction, um when when the when the when the data is released, okay. So usually if you are if you're trading it that way, right, you um. If you want to speculate on high volatility, you need to try to guess in the correct direction of that. Okay. Now, um, now of course, um, for economic news releases, if you're a swing trader, you have generally have lower impact. And I'll be showing you in a bit what that means. Okay. Lastly, right, for fundamental analysis, you have a higher reliance. You really, really need to know if you're holding a trade for swing traders and even for position traders. So position traders are oh, sorry, I twisted my ankle. Uh, for position traders, right, who are holding the trades for a longer period of time, right, fundamental analysis is very important. And I'll be showing you a couple of the calls that we made previously that actually won us our, our awards, right? And it's a combination of swing trading and fundamental analysis, right? So I need to show you how we can really put it into practice, okay? Now, let me just clear my, my drawings over here and move on to the next point. The next point. So let me show you what I mean by scalping, right? So scalping, yes, you can minimally go to the one hour chart. So um, this is a real uh, scalp. Well, let me just pull out my pen. This is a real scalping opportunity we did with Fibonacci Confluence, right? There's a 38% retracement, 100%, right? You know, there's a, uh, there's a Fibonacci um, projection, Fibonacci extension, uh, Fibonacci expansion. All of it lines up over here. We are expecting prices to do a nice little bounce from there, okay? So what happened, right? What happened with that is that price actually um, went down and it bounced from here. You can see if I zoom in a bit, it ran down, it touched our entry and it bounced up really nicely. Okay, now this is a scalping trade. You notice that 80.19 to 80.43, the take profit is just about 20 pips. This is a very advanced style of scalping. It's a super duper uh, profitable style that I have um, uh, more or less mastered over the years. Hit rate is about 70 to 80%. Risk to reward ratio is usually one is to 1.5 to one is to two. I will teach it more to you guys in the upcoming webinars. But yeah, it's one of my very, very profitable strategies. All right. You can see how I just managed to do jumping on the, on the scalp, right? Two really, really quick trades. This is on the 30 minute chart. You get in and out in a really, really tight, quick amount of time, right? Entry was 80.21, take profit was 80.38. Back a very, very big, take, uh, decent uh, profit. And the stop loss itself is also about 19 pips. So it's very, very, you know, you're keeping a stop loss and take profit very closely. In this kind of circumstances, this kind of strategy, I when you're scalping, you don't need to focus that much on economic news releases. Um, um, I'd rather you don't need to focus that much on fundamental analysis, right? But you do need to take note of, of this important thing over here. When is the big um when is the big news event gonna come? Because if there's a big news event, I'm gonna try to stay out of it. Um, take mill for example as um has a trading view account all right if you're on trading view they actually have this handy little thing let me see if i can find it right if you're on a chart you can uh let me see um you can actually right click um it could be settings events economic events on the cut only future events okay apply to all okay so there you go you know you can see when are the upcoming economic news events um, on the chart itself directly? So if you're going to take a trade, right? Imagine if, um, if let me see what news events are over here. Fed Bostic speech, okay. Um, let, me, let me see if there are any other news events that, are, that might be a high volatility news event. No, no, all right. Let's just do the euro dollar first, okay? Now, so for example, if I know that there's a very, um, um, there's a medium, let's just say a medium news, uh, this is orange color, so it's medium, all right? So if I'm taking a trade, 
right? Um, let me just draw a vertical line over here, right? So this is, so I know there's a news, big news event that's gonna come over here. And if I'm scalping, right? Let's just say I'm looking to trade when price reaches this pullback level, okay? So price reaches this level and I try to take a trade, right? But when price has reached this level, if I notice that it is, I'm about to take a scalping trade, right? A very tight stop loss and a very tight take profit. And it actually happens to be right at where um, the, 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 the big news event is going to be. I will stay out of it because I might be right. I might be able to catch this trade, but because of a news event, I might be wicked out and you know I might be stopped out of the trade over here. Okay. A very important consideration when it comes to um, if you're a scalper. Okay, so just to show you what I mean by that, all right, so we are, um, we're looking at this here. Now, um, let's go to the one minute chart. Okay, um, now who knows what big news event just happened on Friday recently? Yeah, it was a non-farm payroll, guys, right? So, uh, how do I scroll back to I? Oh, you know what? I'm just going to, uh, there's not a good things about here, right? Uh, apply it all. Okay, that's cool. Okay, the non-farm payroll news announcement. Uh, shucks, where is it? There you go. This date over here, okay? Non-farm payroll date is um, was over here. This was the non-farm payroll, guys. Look at this candle over here. Look at this candle. Do, can we all agree that this is a crazy candle, right? If you were trying to scalp, right, um, this would have kind of knocked you out quite a bit, right, because of the volatility of price, okay? But first, we are on a one-minute chart, okay? We are on a one-minute chart. We are on a one-minute chart. Um, now let's, let, let me, let me tweak this, right? So I drew this circle over here. Now let me start looking at a 15 minute chart. Okay. Now on the 15 minute chart, can you see this, um, the, this same bar that occurred? Can we agree that on the 15 minute chart, it doesn't look that scary. Okay. I'm going to remove it here and I'm going to draw a little arrow to this thing over here. This is the um, this is the bar. So this is the non-farm payroll bar on the 15-minute chart. Now it doesn't look that scary anymore, does it? Right? So and then again, right? Let's go to the one hour chart. Right? On the one hour chart, the non-farm payroll, right? I think it was just this bar over here, right? Just looking at it and it looks like any other bar, right? It's not that scary. Right, and that's the thing, you know, the bigger your time frame, meaning whether you're a scalper or you're a day trader, which is a bigger time frame, or you're a swing trader, which is an even bigger time frame, right? Economic news releases, right? This 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 volatility of these news events actually affect you a lot less if you think about it, right? I showed you how it looked like on the one hour chart. It looks like it just looks like any other bar. There's nothing to worry about, right? But if you were on the one minute chart, you were on the five minute chart and you were scalping, man, that bar would have been a scary bar. All right? So that's an important consideration to take note of when you're trading, okay? Now, uh, let, me, let me go back to a, um, let me go back to here, okay? So um, let, let, let me see if I, um, if I covered, yes, correct, correct, this part, this part, put it out over here, okay? There you go. So this is an uh, important consideration. All right. If you don't have a trading view account, please go get a trading view account. You get a free one, right? And you can actually just right click settings, right? And then economic news events on chart. You only want to see the future ones, you click this. All right. Then you only see the future ones. Okay. Now that is an uh, important thing to take note of. Now I'm going to touch on a few. I'm going to dive into, right? I'm going to dive into the um, some of the key things to focus on when it comes to macroeconomic analysis, right? When it comes to macroeconomic analysis. What are things to consider? Okay, these are things that you will notice in the um um you will notice in the what's what's the word for it uh in the economic news calendar and it's gonna affect uh it's gonna affect your trades from a fundamental perspective. Okay, the first one is interest rates. 
Okay, just let me um just let me pull up my chat over here so I can see everyone. Okay, remember if you have questions, just send them right uh, right through. Okay, I, I literally have another screen open here, just monitoring it for you guys. Okay, so yeah, you know, for interest rate, basically, is the cost of borrowing money, right? So you know, recently the Fed increased the interest rates. So everyone's gonna, you know, um, people are gonna stay in the forums or you know whatever it is. They're gonna say, oh yeah, yeah, you know, the Fed increased interest rate. How is this interest rate gonna affect the trading from a fundamental perspective, right? Macroeconomic analysis basically means that macro means that it's big, okay? Macro means, you know, there's a difference between macro and micro. Micro means it's very small, macro means it's very big. So macroeconomic means they're looking at the big picture, right? You're looking at a big picture when it comes to uh, analysis, okay? So this is, this is different from technical analysis. Now it's macroeconomic analysis, you're looking at the big picture, Okay, so one of the big things to look at, you know, when you're when you're trading with fundamentals. So this is more useful for swing traders, a little bit you a little bit useful for day traders. Okay, just to give you guys a gauge on um on how to apply fundamental analysis. First thing to look out for is interest rates, interest rate decisions, right? So interest rate is the cost of borrowing money, you know, whether by individuals, companies, or governments, right? So if if interest rate increases, means it's more expensive. If the interest rate decreases, means it's cheaper. Okay, now let's put things into perspective, right? If interest rate goes up, this will result in more savings and less spending. As in people, people will save more and spend less because you know interest rates is more, you know, it's very expensive to borrow money. And this will lead to a decrease in growth. Okay. However, if, if interest rates go down, right? So now it's very cheap, right? Imagine, right? Interest rate could go down. Interest rate is like almost 0%. It's so cheap to borrow, you know, to borrow money. What are you going to do? Everyone's going to go out there. They're going to, there's going to be higher borrowing. If more people borrow money, more people are going to be spending money, right? You can't borrow money and keep it under your pillow, right? You're going to borrow money and go spend it. And this leads to increasing growth, right? And of course, with this increasing growth, that means, of course, uh, currency will strengthen. Okay? So, Let's, let's talk about a few things, right? Um, how the interest rate affects three areas, the currency, the stock market, and the commodity market, okay? Now, if there's higher interest rate, okay? If there's higher interest rate, uh, what happens is that... Sorry, I just, let me see, my, my slide suddenly disappeared, right? Okay, yeah, higher interest rate tend to attract foreign investments, increasing the demand for and value of the home, current, uh, home country's currency. Okay, so the currency will strengthen. Okay, now for if the interest rate increases, the stock markets will drop and the commodity markets will drop. Okay, I don't want to dive too much into it because I, I know someone just, um, yes, for the whole country. Someone just mentioned that it's six thirteen, and we haven't, I haven't, I haven't touched on the the other um, very very important topics because this is only halfway through. I need to, I need to really really uh, touch on a few important topics on how you can apply both technical analysis and fundamental analysis. So I'll touch on these macroeconomic, um, these macroeconomic um topics quickly, right? So that you get an idea about it. If you want to dive a little bit deeper into it, you can ping me separately. Okay. The next thing that we of course we look at is inflation. Right. Basically, inflation is the increase in the prices of goods and services in the economy. Okay, When inflation increases, more money is needed to purchase the same goods and services. You think about it, right? Last time, a Big Mac. So some people call it a Big Mac index, right? Um, sorry, just your RR is a message, right? Yeah, it's, um, I'm, I'm glad you find it interesting, right? Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's like giving you a different, I try and give you a different spin to fundamental analysis. I don't give you the boring stuff. Right, because a lot of the boring stuff you can find online, right? How to apply it to trading is what you want. You're in this webinar for how you're gonna apply it to trading, how you're gonna make money, right? Whether you're a scalper, day trader, or swing trader, that's what I want to teach you guys. Okay, inflation basically, all right, put things in perspective. 20 years ago, a Big Mac that you'll go for McDonald's maybe cost two dollars. Now Big Mac will probably cost about six dollars. That is the concept of inflation. There are two things that you look for: CPI, which is the consumer price index, and PPI, the producer price index. Okay, now cheat sheet for you to look at. Okay, let me just draw out a um, let me just draw it out for you. Oops, uh, here. Okay, yeah, cheat sheet for you to look at. If inflation increases, um, okay, if inflation increases, right, the currency should strengthen. Okay, if you are the stocks, right, 
stocks should weaken and the commodities, right? The commodity market, right? The commodity should strengthen, okay? This is a cheat sheet for you just look at, right? Um, Kelvin, the inflation basically means that, you know, um, yes, I will show you the all, all three types when it applies to trading. I need to cover this topic pretty fast, right? Um, Kelvin, inflation just basically means that, you know, cost of living just keeps increasing, right? So, you know, we, um, I'm not sure if, uh, you know, maybe your parents in the past said, oh, you know, in the past it was so cheap, you know, a bowl of noodles, right? A bag of rice was so cheap, but now it's so expensive. Prices of houses in the past were so cheap, but it's so expensive now, right? That is all a fact of inflation. Okay, now, um, now let's, let's move on to the next one, all right? Let's move on to the next one, which is growth. Growth, you know, measures the health of an economy, okay? Um, health of an economy through the increase in goods and services produced. Basically, it's just GDP. One of the main things that people measure growth with is this thing. Let me just pull up my drawing tool again. Is this main thing that we look at at GDP, okay? Now, growth is, of course, um, interest rate rise, the price increase. Yes. Uh, is likely, you know, we are in unprecedented, unprecedented times of inflation. Not sure if you can hear my cat meowing away. <laughs> All right, it's a feeding time now. Right. Are you guys able to hear that? Right. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, my cat and my baby both, both crying away. <laughs> All right. Yeah, anyway, guys, GDP. Okay. Um, now, there are a few things that you look for uh, in growth, right? First is the GDP. Second is international trade balance, right? Which is also seen a lot in the economic news releases. It measures the difference between imports and exports. Right? And last one is retail sales, which measures growth you know, through consumer expenditure and is used to assess the direction of economy. Okay, Now, economic growth is actually the most watched economic indicator because it, en um, it enables an increased uh, living standards. Okay, So when there is economic growth, right, currency would increase, will improve. Okay? Because you know, um, all things equal, the revenue of the government does you know increases, hence the value of the currency, right? If the for the stock market, right, it will also improve, right? And growth is good, stock market is good, right? And then you know, as more companies grow, they require more commodities, oil, gold, right? And then the commodity market will increase, will improve. So growth, you know, if GDP increases, it usually benefits the entire country. That's the cheat sheet that more or less you guys need to uh, focus on, right? Just going to touch on really quickly because I realized that we're running out of time. And I want to show you guys some pretty cool tools that we have, right? We should be coming your way um, probably in the middle of the month. Last thing is unemployment. Of course, we know un uh, unemployment, right? Uh, is a very, very good indication. Non-farm payroll is one of the big things that we look at, right? Uh, but unemployment is a very, very big, important figure um, to look at from an economic point of view, right? Um, yeah, from an economic point of view, right? Because... Um, unemployment is measured basically right, um, by the unemployment rate, which is basically a percentage of the people in the force, in the workforce without jobs, but are able and willing to work. So the last Friday that just passed, non-farm payroll is one of the key things that people use to measure. Okay, So an increase in unemployment would result in a decrease in non-farm payroll, in non -farm payroll and this usually signals a slowdown in economy. That is why it's such a big thing that people look at. First Friday of the month, everyone just cramps and look at the number, especially the US number, the unemployment figures, right? It is the, one of the most watched economic news releases ever because it's so important, right? If prices, you know, if, if there's an increase in unemployment, right? Suddenly people start worrying. They're like, oh man, what's going to happen? You know, is there, there's so many reasons why there could be an increase in unemployment. But, you know, all of it points to, you know, basically if there's an increased unemployment, the stock market is not going to do well, right? The, the currency market is not going to do, the currency of the country is not going to do well. And of course, the commodities market is not going to do that well too, okay? Now, um, I do want to touch on a couple of things here, right? I'm going to show you how I applied um, technical analysis and fundamentally, fundamental analysis together to get really good trading opportunities, okay? So this was a call I did on dollar CNH, okay? So um, let, me, let me just take out my handy dandy pen over here, right? So dollar CNH, this was the one day chart, okay? One day chart means it's a slightly longer term analysis, 
right? This was the, I'll show you the next three trades that won us the award, okay? So this was a move we are calling, right? So dollar CNH, right? We're looking at this major support area over here. We are calling for the China Yuan to strengthen, right? Very nice descending, uh, descending channel over here, right? Price was just about breaking this level. So we're thinking that price will go all the way down to here, at least for next, um, next quarter, next three to, three to four months. Okay, so from a technical analysis point of view, you know, we are expecting prices to continue to drop down. Okay, now this was my, um, this was a report that I sent to, uh, I, um, this was a live recorded webinar, of course. So this was a report I said, okay. I think it is regardless, um, is dollar CNH going to drop? I think it is regardless whether it's a Biden or Trump win. Let me just um, highlight the couple of parts to you, right? Because China is exchange rate hawks and they insist that the exchange rate, you know, adjust to bilateral, blah, 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 right? PBOC has a more potent stance towards the yuan appreciation. That means yuan strengthening, yes, CNH strengthening, right? Uh, take note, as long as there's no further escalation, you know, the yuan will strengthen. And of course, a little bit of bias that dollar is going to weaken. You know, we can expect to see dollar CNH drop towards a 6.40 level, okay? Now, it seems a little bit hard for you to get a gauge of what I'm just saying because a fundamental analysis requires you to have a very broad, that's why I say macroeconomic analysis, right? You need to have a broad understanding of, um, of the country's, um, of course, not only a country's political, right? But also the economical kind of standings, right? And what happened since then, right? What happened since then, is that of course price has uh, price? This was where we forecasted the, the vertical dotted line and it dropped all the way to our target in February 2021, right? So that was about uh, October, November, five months, right? So it's a longer term trade, like I said, right? It's usually a longer term trade that plays itself out over time, right? So this is how you can, this is how one way to combine technicals and fundamentals. Notice I did not go crazy with technicals because when it comes to longer term trades, like I mentioned, swing trading, position trading, a lot bigger emphasis is placed on the fundamentals, right? Less on the technicals, okay? This was my forecast on the SPX, right? So the SPX, right? Same thing I was highlighting over here, right? Um, uh, the same thing I was highlighting over here. Uh, what's the link to your fundamental analysis on tick mill, right? I think I usually cover the technical analysis. I don't cover that much fundamental analysis on TakeMill, but in the VIP room, which I'll be showing you guys soon, I will cover the fundamental analysis every day, okay? So yeah, you know, there was a very, very big support level over here, right? You know, um, price, there was a couple of Fibonacci levels that we were doing, you know, there was a nice Fibonacci projection. And my forecast was that price would kind of rise to the 3,600 level, okay? So what happened since then, of course, in this topic, I'm just going to talk about fundamentals. Right. Regardless of a Biden or a Trump win, we expect the stock market to continue to do well. Right. Our fundamental bias, right, is that we should see SPX continue to rise, right? Up to maybe um, you no, know, we're seeing support on three to three, four. We should expect to see prices continue to rise, regardless of a Biden or Trump. And of course, Biden won that election. How that looks like, how that looks like, really quickly, I'm going to show you guys. Is that price? This was our forecast. Price continue to shoot all the way up. Now, re really simple, right? But you need to have a good understanding of fundamentals. You need to be able to hold the long game. You need to be able to hold this are called positional trade. So those of you guys who mentioned earlier that you guys are positional traders, right? That is what you need to do. You need to look a little bit at fundamentals. Don't just go crazy into technicals. Thank you very much, Richie. Right, and I'm going to show you that you can actually use this on st the stock market too, right? This was our forecast on Tesla. Everyone was saying, um, at the time of the election that Tesla was going to go down further, okay? Because it was starting, if, if you guys remember, Tesla was just rising like crazy, right? It was going up, going up like crazy over here, right? But we applied this concept called Elliott Wave, one, two, three, A, B, C, D, E, corrective four wave pattern and potentially shoot up further towards the 600 level, okay? That was our Elliott Wave analysis with um, very simple Elliott Wave analysis, right? Triangle pattern, right? Whoever... Those of you guys who are into technical analysis and use um, triangle patterns, triangle patterns usually suggest a continuation, right? Usually happens the way four. I will teach you guys in the, um, in the upcoming webinars more and more advanced technical analysis, okay? Right, I, want, I just want to encourage you guys that it is very possible to make money with trading, right? You just need to figure it out. In this case, my view on this was that um, you can see 
from a fundamental perspective, right? From the fundamental perspective, right? We expect a Biden win, which is a good sign for Tesla and our overarching bullish bias. Okay, then of course, from a technical perspective, you know, Elliott Wave Theory, you know, we can see even 600 as a target, right? With both fundamentals and technicals lining up nicely, we made the bold call for Tesla to rise up to 600, you know, which said it was at its peak. And of course, from there, what happened, right? What happened is that price of Tesla just shot up to 600 and even went up even further, right? So that is how you combine fundamentals and technicals in this sense over here, okay? Now, there's one place which I want uh, to show you guys uh, uh, when it comes to practicing your analysis, okay? Um, it's a VIP trading room and I'm going to show you guys in a bit, all right? I've been promising this uh, to you guys. Um, let me just pause my sharing for a while. I, oops. Uh, pause sharing. Okay. Um, let me see if I have the screen over here for you guys. Yeah, we got a VIP take me room over here. And I'm going to show you. Okay. Um, can you guys see my screen now? It should be a slightly different screen. Are you guys able to see? All right, cool. Okay. So this is the VIP take me room. We should be uh, rolling out to you guys, um, hopefully middle of this month, maybe next month, right? Pretty soon, right? But we need your feedback on it. Okay, so the VIP Tick Mill room is where you will get access to me. You will get access to the whole range of Tick Mill uh, analysts, right? Um, Patrick Munelli that you guys know, really, really, uh, a really, really good trader, right? So what you guys can do over there, right, is that um, it's a little bit small, so I'm going to zoom in a bit, right? Is that what you can do over here is that let's just say you have, uh, you know, you have uh, dollar yen, okay? We're looking at dollar yen over here, Okay. So let's just look at dollar yen. And if you were wondering, like um, on the one day chart, okay, not dollar yen, maybe just go dollar cat instead because dollar yen is just going up like crazy. Okay. So if you're on dollar cat, right, and you're looking at a chart here and you're thinking, oh man, uh, many, many reactions off here, right? You're going to highlight this area, right? Highlight this area over here. And you say, uh, you know, hey, Desmond, right? Um, do you think this is um this is a potential resistance area to um to trade from right what resistance area are you referring to you just highlight the text you click this button link object to text click the chart the object that you just drew right you can see it light up when i hover over it and you send the message through okay so when i'm reading your message right of course i can see your little notification appear at the top corner Right, but if I'm reading your message and I hover over what you just wrote, you can see that the chart lights up. Okay, so that gives me more perspective. I can click on it and then I can have a dedicated discussion area with you over here. You know, uh, yeah, you know, looks uh, looks very strong, looks very strong, right? And you know, whether you want to give your little emoji reactions, you know, stuff like that, you can do that too. Of course, you notice that we have this thing up here where the, the more you participate, the higher your rank, you know, rises, right? So, you know, you start off as a junior trader and the better you trade, the better you perform, you know, you get, uh, you rise up the ranks, all right? So this is what we're going, uh, what we intend to roll out, right? Um, for new clients to really be there and to help you trade because currently we're doing webinars, right? Webinars, we go to one webinar, you need to wait for one or two weeks before another webinar. And then you can, uh, you know, before you can, you can ask me questions. But in this room, every day I'll be, we'll be sharing, you know, you'll be, connected to many, many profitable traders that we have, right? And we'll be sharing with you our analysis. If you have a question, you post it, right? And we can, uh, we can answer it for you, okay? Now, um, of course, so this is, um, let me just stop sharing over here, right? Um, this is what is coming for you guys, right? And we do need to um, run a quick little poll, if you don't mind, right? Uh, well, how do I share a poll over here, right? Um, live trading room. Right, yes. Okay, um, we need to know uh, from you guys, how many of you guys would prob um, think that such um, uh, such a thing is going to be useful, right? Your reading is not... Oh, th thank you very much, Kelvin, right? Such a thing is going to be useful for you guys, right? So that we can get a gauge and we know, we know how soon we can roll it out for you guys, right? Because ultimately, we want to help you be a better trader. And if you are a, um, if you're a person who use technical analysis, you might... I, I personally feel that 
you might find it useful, you know, when you're drawing trend lines, when you're drawing Fibonacci, when you're drawing moving average. No, no one ever draws a moving average. I mean, when, you, when you're doing moving averages, channels and stuff, you know, how many of you guys uh, think that this would be useful for you, right? And that will help us know, you know, how, how soon we can expedite it uh, to you guys, all right? Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm going to just really quickly. Um, uh, yes, technicals, fundamentals, and everything else in between, right? Okay, Olivia, let's not share that with anyone else. <laughs> okay, All right. Okay, now I'm gonna end poll over here. Okay, end poll. All right. Okay, okay. Yeah, so we have a good, of course, we have a good hundred percent who says that. Um, I need, I need to save this anyway. We have a good hundred percent of uh guys say that you're gonna find it useful, which is great, which is great, right? And the next thing which I'm going to um, yes. So the next thing I'm gonna uh gonna answer Alex's question, right? Is the next poll over here. Live account, right? So I'm gonna launch this, right? So we, so okay, you know, if you were to get access to to live trading room, if we require you to have a live TikMe account, would you be okay with it? All right, how many of you guys are okay with it? If you already are a TikMe account holder, let me know, right? Or if you're not, you know, please let us know too, right? So we can get a rough gauge on whether you know, uh, this is something which <laughs> which non TikMe account holders would be would want to get. Right, and uh, it really helped us make a decision better because trust me, the world of trading is not easy. Right, the world of trading. I went through. I blew up seven of my accounts previously before I became profitable. But what I do want to share with you is that now, you know, I'm I'm a 32 year old guy. Right, I'm trading full time. Right, and you know, you can support a family. You know, you can actually you know be financially free if you trade properly. Right, that's the most important thing. If you trade properly, and that's what uh we want to try and encourage you guys to do. Right, is that you know, um, instead of giving you webinars and the analysis that you see on the blog every day, we want to try to take it one level further to try to hold your hand a little bit more to take you on a trading journey, right? So that um, you know, you can ask us questions as and when you can, uh, instead of waiting for it one week or two weeks later. Okay, now I'm gonna end poll over here, and well, I just I share really good results from you guys that um the, uh, yeah, I think it's a a good bunch of you guys, right? Almost. The majority of you guys will be okay with it. Now, um, we are still finalizing. We're still finalizing the the requirements. I believe you know a simple one thousand dollars account with a take me take me one thousand dollars account will give you give you access to it, right? Um, but yeah, I think it's just a, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a thousand dollars account should give you access to it. We'll be rolling out pretty soon, but just finalizing the last bit of details, right? But it's free for you guys, so you guys don't need to pay, right? As long as you take me account, it comes as a super VIP kind of treatment for you guys. Right, yeah. Okay, okay, Richie, it's awesome to know, man. Yes, yes, and, and why Chan, that, 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 that was painful for me, but it helped me learn to, you know, uh, learn to trade, be uh, to trade better. Okay, now guys, of course, um, I'm just going to, I'm, where is my slides over here? Well, where are my slides? Okay, so that's it for me. Well, what I encourage you guys is to head over to this, you know, tickmill.com education, Webinars, I'll be covering another webinar in another two weeks. It might be me, it might be Cassandra, right? Uh, it might be Cassandra. And I hope that you guys join me. Hopefully by then we have a VIP room to hang out in, right? Um, uh, no worries, Rich, you can come in late. You can jump over. Uh, you can jump over from another broker, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, we encourage you to jump over from another broker if you want, right? Hey, sorry. Yeah, uh, jump over from another broker if you want, right? <laughs> but yeah, I hope you found this uh this topic useful today right um yeah i hope you found this topic useful today right covering fundamental analysis join me two weeks from now let me see what i can see some of you guys asking me what i'll be covering right i think you just need to go to client tools go to webinars right and um yes you'll be able to get the videos of the last session if you go to tick meal youtube right tick meal youtube oops wrong channel right um this one here I, you go to playlists and you should have the ultimate forex trading masterclass. Oh, there's only a techni technical analysis one on one over here, right? So I just um, share it for you over here. Um, so this is the, yep, this is the, this is the place. Um, we'll be adding the future playlist into here, right? I still think it's missing the first one. We have another, um, we have another webinar upcoming. Yes, over here on 23rd of May. Right. Um, and you'll be covering support and resistance, right? So 
I'll be teaching you guys the correct way. <laughs> a little bit bold for me to say it, but the correct way to use uh, support and resistance, okay? Right, using pullback overlaps and swing, uh, swing highs and swing lows, right? Yes, Gauri, you will be able to apply that in your trading, uh, especially in day trading, all right? So that is where the juicy stuff begins. You know, we start looking at how we can apply technical analysis. I'll be jumping hopefully into the VIP room and be showing you um, how to trade. VIP room ideally is, um, it's still not confirmed yet, but uh, uh, probably about $1,000 live account with TakeMill and you get um, the VIP treatment from them. All right. That's it for me, guys. Right. I'm just going to send you the, guy, the link to you guys here. Please sign up for it. You know, if you haven't signed up for it, right. If you see that I have bigger eye bags two weeks from now, you know the reason, right. But otherwise, it has been great uh, having you guys. Thank you for staying throughout the entire webinar, right. Even beyond the one hour, right. It's not nice to have you guys, right. Uh, to join me on this journey to being a profitable trader, right? You know, uh, learn the right stuff, right? Remember, guys, this, um, in trading, you know, it's always as important to learn the right stuff as it is to learn to avoid learning the wrong stuff. Okay, thank you, Irish. Thank you, Elon. Thank you, Richard. Right, it's been a great time with you guys. I'll catch you guys in two weeks. Stay safe, trade safe, and peace out, guys. Peace out. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you, Tulani, Wetzel, Kelvin, Mark. Nice. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Ideas, ideas, and have a good, yeah, it's a good Monday. <laughs> I just lost track of time. I have a good trading week ahead, guys. All right. Cheers and peace out, man. Cheers and peace out, guys. Bye-bye.